after buying, selling, and trading musical equipment for over two decades now, I've come to realize that things don't bring you happiness. As much as I love guitars, I realize that buying that new guitar will not make me happy. It's the music you create with them. It's the friendships and the relationships that you make, the modifying, the repairing, sharing the equipment with others. That's what I enjoy about it. I knew that for years that things don't buy you happiness, but I really just didn't understand that until maybe, I don't know, a few years ago. Now, that being said, I still buy a lot of stuff, but I understand and not get so attached to it. The reason why I say that is because there's, I was an impulsive gear purchaser, especially with guitars and recording equipment. So when you see something you like, I, I've learned over time to tell myself, hey, sit with it, don't pull the trigger yet. And after a couple of weeks, I kind of would say, yeah, I don't need it. If the guitar presents itself to me later down the, the road and, it, and the deal's right, yeah, maybe, maybe keep an eye out for it. You don't need it right now. Well, unfortunately, this is one time I gave into the impulse. I sat on this for like almost a day. It was a model that was a limited edition and it's fairly new. I don't know much about it. There's only supposed to be 236 pieces released for the US market. I don't know if that's true or what the deal is or the significance of that number is. This model just happened to kind of tickle some of the uh, proclivities that I have for what I like in a guitar and I just couldn't pass it up. A lot of these are still being sold new from dealers. This was a dealer that had one that was listed as used, but it's practically a new guitar. I shot him an offer that was, I figured wasn't a low ball offer, but it was fair. And of course, as soon as I shot that uh, offer over, I got a, it got accepted immediately. It must've been on an auto accept. And I instantly regretted it. I was like, damn it, why did I do that? But I honestly don't regret this because this has some really cool features and it's extremely unique in many different ways and it's kind of a collision of the worlds of gibson and fender you can see obviously we're going to be probably looking at a fender here so what the heck did i get here so i purchased a fender made in japan all white karina offset telecaster Wow. So what have we got going on here? So first, of course, what really was striking to me about this guitar is that it was made of Karina. We normally associate Karina with the original 58 Gibson Explorers and Flying Vs. So it's very, very rare to see it on a Fender instrument. And in fact, let me butt breath uh, at you for a little bit. They did experiment with some different woods in the 60s, and there's known to be three Stratocasters, I think from 63, that are finished in sunburst that have a white Karina body, but they have the regular maple and rosewood neck. And when I was poking around the internet looking for pictures of the original Karina Stratocasters, I came across this guitar.com article from 2019 where they featured an all original 63 Strat finished in none other than surf green, which if you know anything about custom colors is probably one of the rarest colors of all time next to maybe shell pink. And when they were taking the guitar apart, they realized that it was actually made of Karina. So I didn't know about this guitar before I saw this article, but man, a, an original 63 Strat in a super rare custom color and made of Karina. This is probably one of the rarest vintage Stratocasters of all time. I don't know the sales history, but if it hit the open market, I wouldn't be surprised if it got six figures. And I think there's at least one telly. I know Dave Rogers in his personal collection on the website has a picture of a Karina telly but it's not normally used in Fender type builds. And even Gibson nowadays, they've licensed out builders to actually pay them a royalty to build their Explorers and their Flying Vs. So when I saw this, that it was in white Karina, and not only the body, but also the neck was made with Karina. I was kind of sold on it. But the other thing about this is why I didn't want to pass on it, is that it was actually kind of made to vintage type specifications. Now granted, this is a newer model, the offset Telecaster, as it is kind of become to be known nowadays, uh, was unofficially the Telemaster. I first saw these, I think, in the 
Aurora Ots, the late 2000s, maybe around 2010, there's a high-end shop called Making Music in Chicago here. And I think they were kind of doing their this run of this body style for their shop. That's the first time I saw it. And they even did like one pickup Esquire styles really cool looking guitars but they were all kind of like special custom shop makes they originally started calling them the telemasters because it's basically a telecaster living within a jazz master body shape telemaster makes sense but there's actually a hobby actually a large hobby airplane called the telemaster and i think they found out and they put a halt to them calling this the telemaster which is funny because you know, we all know in 1951 with the whatever the broadcaster with the Gretsch at least that was in the same sort of music instrument production that was a toy plane versus a guitar but it just goes to show it never stops the reason that I really love this one is you got the mix of two worlds first of course you've got the Fender Telecaster mixing with the Jazzmaster but also you have the Gibson world with the white Carina and the black pickguard with a pair of P90s pickups. Now, it's not so uncommon nowadays to see that in a Fender guitar, but it's not as often. It's normally associated with kind of Gibson guitars. But the one thing that I really did love is they decided to keep the chopped three saddle bridge. Now, I honestly would have loved if they kept it a full Tele bridge with a Tele bridge pickup and the P90 in the neck, but this is pretty close. And I have to say, the neck has got some girth to it. They said it's supposed to be like a U-shaped neck. It has an actual bone nut, and it uses the vintage Clouson style vintage type tuners. And you can see it's made in Japan, 2020. String through body, the chop bridge, P90s, your standard master volume tone, and the uh, top hat knob. The output jack is kind of at a 90 degree angle down here. That's kind of weird. It's not the lightest guitar. I mean, jazz master bodies are usually kind of towards the five pound side alone for the bodies. So I'd say this is more in the eight pound range. So it is a bit heftier, but beggars can't be choosers with this style. I just thought that that was one of the coolest combinations to get a fender that was all white Carina or white limbo whatever you want to call it but the neck as well and of course it's made uh, in the Fuji Gen plant in Japan and the standards of course are extremely high I was surprised to see this because you don't see a lot of the mainstream builders doing production guitars that are in Carina it just tugged at too many of my uh, heartstrings for the old explorers. This looks legit, It you know, because like a lot of the Apple phones are veneered. This looks like it is a legit Karina body. So I can't wait to get it on the bench and hear how it sounds. Uh oh, what did I done do? You know, I went and done it again. You know, I know things don't bring you happiness but they sure make for cool unboxing videos. I talk about how I try not to buy stuff that I don't need and don't do impulse buying and I don't need all this gear. But this is one of those things where I kind of saw it and I almost immediately bought it. Like it took me about five minutes to go, yeah, I want to buy this. And the reason being is I actually owned something that was very similar to this, but um, I had just sold it like a couple months ago because I'll be honest, I needed money. It was the simplest fastest way to get a bunch of income going and so when I saw this I go okay I totally regretted the other thing I sold so I got to jump on this and I was going to shoot him an offer it was on reverb it was priced so reasonably I, I knew it wouldn't last so I, I just went ahead and I, I pulled the trigger on it right away and pretty nice pack job but what could be in here that's it looks a lot bigger it's, it's probably not a guitar it is packed nice but I hate 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 packing peanuts and well there's gonna be a little bit of a cleanup but for the sake of sake of the video we'll make a mess here so this is obviously whoa it's an amp amp head oh man wait a second that's kind of interesting okay so one of my favorite, dare I say, boutique, though he didn't like that moniker, and I agree with him, he was an independent amp builder, but he made, you know, everything one at a time, but he didn't like to be called boutique. I had one of those amps, same model and a combo. I sold it, 
I regretted it. I owned a head and cab years ago and I regret selling it. And so when I saw this, I said, I gotta, I gotta go for it. But I didn't realize, you know, I thought he had the listing lift at, at, in, it said it was in Daphne blue. I'm like, Daphne blue. He obviously selected the wrong thing because it all looked white. But it's actually in Daphne Blue Tolex. Oh my God. That was a surprise. All his pictures didn't look blue. But it's funny because this guy who built the amps decided to shut it down about three years ago. He decided to stop doing it. And I think he's working for Fender. It's, so I gotta, I gotta follow up on that. But I saw it in one of those Rhett Scholl videos that he might be working for Fender if it's the same guy. It's Rob Pierce. And of course, I'm talking about Valve Tech amplifiers. Oh man. This is, whoa, this is way cooler than I thought it was going to be. Oh, man, that is cool. Sorry, I'm kind of geeking out here. So I had a Hey C30, uh, a 1x12 combo in black Tolex. It was missing the logo. I sold it. I actually bought two of these from a shop that had two adhesive logos, and I gave one of them to the guy that I sold the amp. I sold it to a guy in Oregon, and I think I bought this from Oregon. So I shipped a Valve Tech to Oregon, and then I bought one <laughs> from Oregon, or somewhere out west. But look at that, it's like white piping with a silver grill cloth in a custom, like Daphne blue, powder blue Tolex. Oh man, that is so cool. <laughs> oh man. So obviously, as the name implies, it's a uh, clone of an AC30, and this one has the half power switch. Oh, and it's a master on here, so he's got a master. So my other one didn't have reverb, and it didn't have a master. So this one's got a master. It's got 18 and 16 ohm outs. It's got the reverb. Man, I, I am so glad I bought this. Like I seriously said, why the hell did you buy this? You didn't need this. You just bought a guitar that you weren't planning on buying. I don't even own a sofa yet, guys. I don't own a sofa yet. And I have guitars. And the owner got it out. You know, the guy who sold it said he regretted selling it. Like everyone, you know, they regret selling it. And he said he I packed all the tubes up separately. That was real nice of him. So he got it out the door and packed the tubes up separately so they weren't rattling in there. He didn't have to do that, but that was a really nice touch. Definitely going to get a five, five star review. I mean, everyone does, but he did a great job. And let's see if is this is a hardware. Usually they're an IEC on the side. Yeah, it's an IEC, but man, the build quality is awesome. And this one has a master and reverb. I didn't even realize it had all that. I pulled the trigger on it so quickly. I just looked it over to make sure that there wasn't anything funny going on and everything looked legit. And this guy said he, you know, I'm the second owner. He had it, he had it built for him. But your classic, basically AC top boost. It doesn't have the EF86 switch, which a lot of the Valtex have on the Hacy series. He did make straight 15 Hacy 15s, and I've been after a VAC. So. I reached out to the guy I sold my VAC to, but that was like eight years ago. So let's, I don't know if his context is still valid, but I'm so excited to try this out. So the Valtec AC30, gonna fire this up and, and check out what it can do.
Thanks for watching. I'm working on a demo on the Karina Telemaster, uh, so hopefully that'll be out pretty soon. And I might do one on the Valve Deck too, but thanks for watching and get ready for many, many more demos and videos here at Bolexa Guitars. And uh, peace out and subscribe and all. God dang it!